Oh, PO ears. I didn't see you there. Thank you for stopping in. What? You'd like to learn more about fluid power? You've come to the right place. So let's take a look at what we've talked about so far. For today's assignment yesterday, we looked at schematics and we saw there's lots of symbols to represent different components of fluid power systems just like there is in electricity. We need a schematic for someone to be able to draw it up and to be able to explain your ideas and to be able to do some calculations. Prior to that, we talked the first day about all the advantages of fluid power, such that it has very flexible hosing. You can run it all over the place. It's easy and very accurate to control. So if you're uh, operating a backhoe or a robotic arm, you can take it if it has hydraulics and move it very, very minusculely, if that's such a word. Uh, one power source can move many operations. So again, if we're sitting on a piece of equipment, we have an engine running a pump, and that pump is pushing oil out into all different types of cylinders so I can have arms go up and down, buckets move, wheels turn. Uh, it's safe in hazardous conditions because it's moving a fluid or a gas, normally air, so it's not going to be creating sparks or things like that. And today we want to talk about how it multiplies force. Okay, just like we used gear ratios to multiply our force, we're going to do that also with hydraulics. So let's take a look over at the big TV of death. Okay, we're here now at the big TV of death, and let's start with just reviewing a schematic. There's many, many symbols listed at the end of this PowerPoint. I don't expect you to know even a, a quarter of them, just some major ones. We have a reservoir down here that's holding our fluid. In this case, it, you can tell that it is a liquid because it is open and it's called a reservoir. A receiver tank holds air or gas under pressure. But this is a reservoir. We have a pump donated by that circle with an arrow showing which way the flow is going. We have a motor that's supplying the power to run the pump. We have our lines that are carrying our fluid wherever they might need to go. We have here a rather complicated looking valve. It could be simply an on and off valve, but this valve allows the fluid to flow to either side of this cylinder. There's our cylinder. This is a double acting cylinder because it has two lines coming into it. Oil on this side will force the piston out. Oil on this side will force the piston in. Here we have a filter system. So after the oil does its loop, if it picked up any kind of crud or dirt, it will get filtered out before it returns to our reservoir. And this thing here in the middle, you might be wondering, I would never ask you what that is for my research. That is like a relief valve. So if the pressure in the system build up so high that it could damage something before that happens, this is designed to release the pressure and the oil would flow back into the tank. So those are our major schematic symbols right there. Now, if we scroll down here a little bit, all this is made pop possible by a pump. There's a motor or an engine running a pump and that pump is taking this liquid and it is putting it under pressure and pushing it out. Think about a garden hose. You open the valve, there's water shooting up because there's pressure behind it. Well, that pressure's behind it because of a water tank for the burrow that's sitting way up on a hill perhaps and gravity is forcing the water down. Well, if we're sitting inside of a, uh, a piece of equipment, we don't have that kind of advantage. We need like a motor or an engine to run this pump to create our pressure. So there's different types of pumps. You don't need to know anything about different types. But what that's going to do is going to put our oil under pressure and it's going to make it move. And we looked at this a little bit yesterday. And what they're talking about here is how far this actuator or piston moves is dependent upon the amount of volume that's inside there. So if there's a given flow taking place, there's 10 gallons per minute, it's flowing. If it goes into this side, where it's simply an empty cylinder, there's a huge cubic, uh, there's lots of area or volume there to be filled, it's going to fill slower than when it fills on this side because running right down the middle of that same cylinder on this side is the piston, big piece of steel and it's displacing where oil or fluid can't go, and so it takes less fluid to fill up over here than it does here. So if the same flow rate is happening on both sides, the piston is gonna move out faster this way than it would, oh, I'm sorry, the piston is gonna move faster going back because there's less to displace than going this direction, okay? Um, sort of like if, if we had this jug right here, we got a water jug, pretend this is a cylinder, and we start pouring water into here at a given flow rate, it does not change, okay? And in there we have a ping pong ball that floats. Let's pretend that's our actuator. As this thing fills up, the ping pong ball rises. If this were half its diameter, half this thing, small cylinder, we had a ping pong ball in there at the same flow rate, it's gonna fill up a whole lot faster. If we had that same flow rate pouring into a bathtub, it's gonna fill up much slower. 
So given the same flow rate, depending on how much displacement there is inside the cylinder, will depend how fast things move. All right? Now, there is resistance to overcome in any system, just like in electricity. In electricity, we needed voltage to overcome the resistance to move those electrons. Here, we need pressure, which is like our voltage, to move the oil through a line. Wherever a line goes around a corner, there's pressure. It's rubbing against the sides of the line. That's pressure. So if the line's very long, there's going to be more pressure. We have to overcome that with our pump. Here's where I really wanted to get today. Blasé Pascal. From the 1600s, he worked a lot with fluid power and he came up with this formula and that little triangle ought to look familiar but with some different letters. We saw something like that for electricity with Ohm's law where voltage was equal to current times resistance. Well, Blasé Pascal came up with the idea that the force something is able to exert in a fluid system is equal to the pressure times the area. And of course you can use that in three different ways, or you could say pressure is equal to force divided by area, or you could say area is equal to force divided by pressure. And we're going to use those simple calculations to do some uh, figuring for some problems you're going to have in a moment. So if I were to take my cylinder again, this thing's filled now to the top with a fluid. And let's say the opening right there at the top is two square inches and I press down on that two square inches with a cylinder and I put pressure there and I put 10 pounds of pressure. So 10 pounds of pressure, two square inches. The bottom of this is, let's say, uh, 100 square inches. Two square inches to 100 square inches. This is 50 times greater than that, okay? Pascal's law says that pressure exerted here, 10 pounds per square inch, is exerted everywhere evenly all over this cylinder. Down here, since this is now, what did I say? I forget, 100 square inches, every one of those square inches is experiencing that 10 pounds of pressure, okay? And so it is being multiplied, and I now forget the numbers I was using, multiplied by the difference between this area and this area. That proportion is how much that force, 10 pounds of force, is being multiplied down here. So let's take a look at some problems here. So here we have this cut away of our bottle. We put 10 pounds of force on the top, there's 20 square inches at the bottom, and at the top we have a one inch stopper, one square inch stopper. So there's one square inch here, 20 square inches here. This is 20 times greater in area than that. If we apply 10 pounds of force, the resultant force down here is going to be 20 times greater. I'm not sure if you can see that, but instead of 10 pounds of force, 200 pounds of force. Picture, if you can, for a moment that that thing there is not three-dimensional, but it's like a flat bladder. And if you work at all with the fire department, you would be familiar with these things for rescuing. They have very thick rubber bladders. It's like empty. But you can force air into it like a pillow, and it will blow up. Okay? And they come in varying sizes. Well, you get them out here about 36 inches by 36 inches, whatever square inches that is. They take their air compressor that's on the fire truck, put it on there with 100 pounds of force, and that is multiplied by the proportion from the little inlet here to 36 by 36. And with that, that force is magnified and they can lift vehicles right off the ground in order to rescue people, all right? So there is, of course, a trade-off, though. We don't magically make more uh, uh, energy. We can't do that or magically makes, we can do, we can multiply our force, but we got to give something up. And what we give up, just like we were working with levers, is distance. So here we have a hydraulic press. I put 10 pounds of force there. I'm going to be able to lift 100 pounds of force over here. However, the dish, the, the, the uh, downside is I had to move this piston this far. This piston only moved that far. So I gave up distance to get the increase in force. Okay? Here you can see when there's 10 pounds of force applied here, Pascal's law, if you see the little arrows, that force is equally distributed everywhere along here, and this area is much bigger than that area, so it's multiplying that amount of force. It just isn't going to travel as far. Okay? The trade-off is, of course, distance. All right? So you're going to have some, uh, everything you saw here on this little presentation today, I'm going to uh, be available for a quiz on Friday and uh, have fun watching. You'll probably want to watch it again. I know you do. I've seen the hits, lots of hits. You guys are watching all the time. Do something else, okay? Just don't watch this all the time. Do something else.